when the yogis practice in order to be free of danger and to be able to practice in safety. The texts prescribe a method for security, for establishing security. And this creates a boundary so that disturbances can't arise. When we're practicing to gain true happiness, then to the extent that we can practice without disturbances, that's the best. So having established this protective security, now is the time to speak about the task Starting with keeping sila, the yogis have been working at the task. And there is an effective way to, uh, sorry. There is an effective way to work. And this combines theory and practice the method that Sayadoji is going to teach. So one needs to listen carefully. As Sayadoji mentioned previously, for clean and pure physical, mental, and physical, verbal, and mental behavior to arise for us to become truly tamed and cultivated then there are two things that are needed. One is that we need to listen attentively to the method sadhukang savana. There needs to be attentive listening, respectful listening. That means not letting one's attention wander. And knowing the method, one has to take it to heart and to apply it, sadhukang manasikara. One has to uh, really take it in and use it. And that means to observe uh, with the mind the arising object. So if one has these two, if one um, has the listens respectfully and then knowing the method, one uses it one takes it to heart, then when these two factors become complete, concentration, samadhi, arises naturally. And from that, knowledge of the way things really are develops stage by stage on its own. So there's no need to wish for these things to come about. And the reason for that is that when the causes are there, when the causes are fulfilled, then the results will occur. So when the causes are there for cultivated behavior, for knowledge to become cultivated, then that will happen. This is sure to be. Yogis have come here from all over the world and they've left their businesses, their families behind because of cherishing the Dhamma and because of wanting to be truly human, to develop a human heart, to gain special knowledge. And some have this goal in mind. This is a, this is a good goal to have. And some have the objective that they just want to try this out. Some want to try this as well as many other things. So people have come here with various (coughs) objectives. However, whatever the objective one may have, what what Sayadawji teaches is the method for developing human culture, for developing true humanity. 
that is for becoming a true human being, for learning to keep one's mind and heart humane, for developing special human knowledge, and for one who really cherishes and wants wants to have the benefits from the practice, then one should listen carefully on how to do this work. This isn't an order that you have to, have to listen carefully, but if you want to know how to do this, one should listen respectfully. And doing the work, the work has to be done respectfully, meticulously, without stopping, without taking breaks. So one has to know the method in order to do this task. And therefore, those who want the benefits from the practice listen carefully and then apply what they learn respectfully. And when those who are helping see such yogis who are um, undertaking their responsibility. The people around the yogis really love such yogis. And um, they really feel that person knows and respects the practice. So people feel um, a lot of love when they see that. If, on the other hand, one doesn't listen to the instructions, or if one listens carelessly, or if one doesn't apply the instructions, when people around such yogis see them, then the mind feels not hatred, but the mind feels cloudy. Because one knows that such a person doesn't value the practice. It's obvious from the way the person is behaving. And then the people around such yogis don't think very highly of them. So don't let yourself be underestimated by others around you. Also, don't pretend to, uh, to practice. Just listen carefully. You, there needs to be this sadhukang savana, careful listening to the instructions, to the talks, the Dhamma talks in the evening, and also to what the interview teacher says. And then one has to undertake the work with respect for the practice, meticulously, carefully. Every yogi has this responsibility, and if one doesn't undertake one's responsibility, then the interview teacher will, uh, after one interview or two interviews, three interviews, if the yogi is still not listening to what the teacher says, if the yogi is still not applying the instructions, then what can the teacher do? They can't do much. So in that case, they just have to uh, kind of be equanimous about it. They have to uh, not spay, pay any special care to the yogi because it doesn't have any effect. So, on the other hand, when one sees a yogi that is taking care with the practice, then the meditation teachers will take care of that yogi. So, if one doesn't listen to the teacher and the teacher begins to ignore you, then one misses the chance to gain the Dhamma in this case. And on top of that, one has already invested something in coming here. One has paid for one's plane ticket and so on. So in order to have a profit on the side of the Dhamma, listen carefully to the instructions and apply them 
you have a mind of, that cherishes the benefits of the practice. And except for when you're asleep, always be applying the instructions, always be working every second of the time. This is very important. Today, Sayadoji is going to start to speak about a sentence, and that sentence is Bhutang Buddhato Pasati. So one who, for one who wants to develop knowledge, to see the true nature of mind and matter, nama and rupa, to see how these are related as cause and effect, to see how these nama and rupa, which are related as cause and effect, <clears throat> are not permanent, how they are unsatisfactory, how they lack an inherent self. And from there to develop vipassana knowledge through all the stages until completion. For one to do this, what they need to do is observe what is as it is. So in the past, when people understood Pali, they would hear the words Bhutan, Bhutato, Pasati, and they would know what it meant. Bhutan means what is, what occurs. Bhutato means as it is. One should observe what is as it is. And this is the method of meditation in summary. What is, what occurs, what is happening? There's no need to observe what is happening in others. We just need to observe what is happening in ourselves. So if we examine the body, feel it, we can feel hardness, we can feel softness. If we happen to touch a bony area, it feels hard. If we touch a fleshy area, it feels soft. This is really there. This is called patavi datu in Pali, the earth element. And there's the quality of being solid or being moist. This is there in the body. And when there's sweat flowing or tears or our nose runs, this quality is obvious. There's heat, coolness, warmth, the quality of lightness. This is also there. This happens in us. There's stiffness, tension, movement. There's the eye that is capable of seeing. There's the ear which can capture <coughs> sound. There's the nose which can capture smell. The tongue capable of taste. The body base capable of touch. These are what is obvious. And then there's seeing consciousness, knowing the sight. There's hearing consciousness, smelling consciousness, tasting consciousness, touch consciousness. And then there's awareness of mind objects. So there's very, various objects connect, contacting the mind. This is called contact. And because of contact between the mind and an object, there's feeling. Feeling is, if there's a good contact, then, the, then there's pleasant feeling that arises, a good feeling. If there's a bad contact, bad object, then there's unpleasant feeling. And then there are objects that are in between, neither pleasant nor unpleasant. There's a neutral feeling to those. So in all of this, there's mind and there's body. 
consciousness, contact, feeling, these are mind. And in, in our experience, there's mind and body, nama and rupa, occurring in pairs, starting with such small acts as opening and closing the eyes, blinking. So there's no need to search for these things. They happen in us. So we have to study what happens inside of us. And that is bhuta, that is what is happening, what happens, what occurs. To know this, the yogis must observe, but not with thinking about it, not with deliberately trying to find out all oh, hardness, softness, and so on. One doesn't deliberately search it out like that. Just note, observe as a whole. And Sayaraji will continue to speak about this. To know mind and matter, nama and rupa, Sayaraji will explain in an obvious way. Just now, Sayaraji was speaking. And as Sayaraji spoke, sound waves, sound was created, and the yogis were listening. So the, the yogis, as the yogis listen, the sound from Sayaraji strikes the ear and this is called hearing or listening. What is really there in the moment of hearing the sound? There's the ear. And inside the ear, there's an element called in Pali, sota pasada, which is capable of hearing, capable of capturing sound. So this is uh, called in English, the receptor or base. As Sayadaji spoke, the sound waves went in a series and reached the yogi's ears and strikes, strike the ear. So that's called the striker, the sound. The sound waves strike the ear. This can't be denied. This is really there. Because of the sound striking the ear, the yogis hear. So there's hearing consciousness. This is, this is called the spark. The sound and the mind are, contact, are in contact, they meet. And this is called pasa in Pali. It means meeting, contact. So this too is obvious, this too is happening. Due to contact, there's feeling. When the sound is one we like, then there's a pleasant feeling. When there's a sound that we don't, don't like, then there's an unpleasant feeling. Some sounds are neither likable nor dislikable, and the feeling is neutral. This feeling is called Vedana in Pali. So at that moment, there's knowing the sound that is hearing consciousness, contact and feeling, and this is mind, this is nama, the sound and the ear are rupa, this is matter. So in the moment of hearing, this is what happens, this is what really is, this is bhuta. Bhuta, it's said, that it, what is, what occurs, arises ever anew, one after another, due to respective causes. Here, there's the ear, and the root cause, the initial cause for us to have an ear, is our previous good karma. But at the present moment, the cause for the ear to be here and capable of hearing is because it is supported by the mind, by the weather around us, and by food. So this is what occurs, this is what is. 
and the sound as Sierraji or I speak, this occurs due to the mind. And the sound, sound waves travel and reach the yogi's ears and there's hearing. So this is how, due to their respective causes, what is there is. There are also the four elements involved. So one hears, there's hearing consciousness. And this is due to, this is a, a consciousness that is neither wholesome nor un, unwholesome. And it's due to past karma. So at the moment of hearing, there's mind and there's matter. These are happening, nama and rupa. And this is Buddha. So one meaning of Buddha is that it is that which arises due to causes ever anew. It's also, it also means that which can be seen directly when one examines it, when one looks at it. So this is what is happening. This is what is. This is the Dhamma that is. And we observe it as a whole. When we, when we meditate, we observe hearing as hearing. We don't divide it up into parts in order to observe hearing. We just observe it the way it is, bhutanto. So we note hearing as hearing. At first we have to observe as a whole and using concepts. Later on, one knows the parts which are involved automatically. For example, when we want to know a person's face, we want to know how some part of the person's face looks, we can't just focus in on that part right away. We have to first look at the face as a whole. And sometimes our eyes will fall on the forehead and we'll know the forehead. Sometimes our glance will fall on the eye or on the cheek, then we'll know what the eye looks like or the cheek looks like. Sometimes the, our gaze will fall on the nose and we'll know how that looks. So in order for, this, for us to know, we have to be face to face with the other person and we have to focus on their face and we have to look at it as a whole. But as we look, the part that interests us, the part that is interesting to us becomes apparent. And in hearing, one can't, when we observe hearing, we can't just focus on the ear. We can't just separate out the sound and focus on that or focus on the sense of contact. At this point in time, we have to just observe as a whole, hearing. In, and is in the case of when we want to know the way some part of a person's face looks, first we have to start by looking at the face as a whole. And the part that we are interested in will become apparent as we look. So in the same way, when we observe hearing, the parts of it will become apparent to us as we observe the hearing as a whole. And this is something that we cannot, we cannot gain practical, we cannot know practically by using reflection. This is not something that we should let reflection enter into. We can't observe before the moment of hearing. We can't observe after hearing happens. We have to observe right when it happens. And only then will our observation be clear. What has to be done in time can't be done sluggishly. So one has to be ready 
one has to apply ardent effort, called in Pali atapa. When the, as soon as the mind, as soon as the object arises, the mind has to be active and alert, not sluggish, not slow, not dull in gazing. So for this we need virya or ardent effort. And we also need aim. That is, the mind has to be focused properly on the object. This is a jhanic quality. So it, this quality of aim makes the mind connect with the object. So we apply effort and aim the mind in order to observe. So this is what Observation is made up of these two qualities, applying our effort when the object arises and aiming the mind so that it connects with the object. As soon as hearing arises, we have to apply our effort and aim the mind every second of the time. And the same at the moment of seeing, at the moment of smelling, tasting, touching, thinking, at the moment of bending, the moment of stretching, the moment of lifting, moving, placing, rising, falling, blinking, opening and closing the eyes. One has to always be applying effort and aiming the mind. One shouldn't just let one's mind, let oneself gaze. So the yogis have to have just this one job to do that is to observe what is happening. And if one does this, if one continuously applies effort and aim to observe the arising object, then sati, samadhi, panya will automatically arise. So every day the yogis must do this job, must do this work. To get our mind to be able to see what is really there at the moment of hearing, as soon as hearing occurs, we have to apply ardent effort. And when we do this, the mind doesn't get cold or sluggish. It's, it's always active and alert when we apply our mind to observe at the moment of arising. And when we do this one moment after another, observing what happens, then laziness cannot arise. Laziness is a disgusting quality that um, is accepted by people who are low and base. And when we observe with art and effort, then instead of laziness, there's effort in our mind. And also, as soon as the as hearing arises, one has to aim the mind. And when one does that, the mind doesn't go anywhere else. Since we are beings that live in the world of the senses, our minds tend to go to sense pleasures wanting to see, hear, smell, taste, touch, delightful things. Some people, their mind tends to go to what they don't like. And then there's dissatisfaction and dislike. But mostly our minds, if not applied, go to things that we like. Because of the factor of aiming, this doesn't happen. The mind doesn't go anywhere else. And therefore, the mind becomes clean. And this is wholesome, very good. When this happens again and again, this clean mind is created and occurs one moment after another. This is called bhavana, mental development. One occurrence of this clean mind is not very strong, but when one follows another, then because this one clean mind and another, they are basically the same, the energy builds. 
and we have to practice in order to develop this. Siroji said, as you could hear uh, the English uh, saying, practice makes perfect, and this is very applicable for us. It's very important for a concept for us to have. Yogis here are at the start of the practice, and so it's necessary to practice in order to develop this. We have to practice steadily without taking a break. Because of observing as soon as hearing arises, if there's effort to get the mind there and aiming, then the mind will fall on the sound. The mind will fall on the object. And there won't be any wondering about who said that. Is it a man? Is it a woman? Thinking is cut off right away. And therefore, no kilesas can arise. This is the immediate benefit of the practice, 